Welcome to the Kroll Reynolds training video for steam ejectors. Today we're going to look at a single nozzle evactor steam ejector. We'll show how it's put together, taken apart, and then also show a performance test for it. Here we have a single nozzle Kroll Reynolds steam ejector. This flange is the discharge end of the ejector. This suction connection flange is where the vapors are pulled from the process. This is the mode of steam connection, connects up to there. This test port is for measuring the vacuum generated by the ejector. This test port is for installing a mode of steam pressure gauge so you know how much motor pressure is on the steam nozzle. This is a view looking in the suction connection where you can see the steam nozzle threaded into the steam chest. This is a view looking down the throat of the ejector where you see the end of the steam nozzle. Here we show where we can remove the bolts that hold the steam chest to the body of the steam ejector. We gently we remove the steam chest so that the steam nozzle is exposed. There's the flange connection where the steam chest bolts to. This is the steam chest showing the gasket. And then the steam nozzle that is threaded into the steam chest. All Kroll Reynolds steam nozzles are engraved with the distinctive job number for the part that is ordered. All steam nozzles are custom built and records are kept at Kroll Reynolds Company dating back to 1917. The steam nozzle is threaded into the steam chest. To remove it, securely hold the steam chest and then untighten the steam nozzle. The steam nozzle has straight SAE threads so it will easily remove from the steam chest. Here the steam nozzle uh, shown by itself removed from the steam chest. There's the inlet to the steam nozzle, is a round uh, radius down to the orifice, and this is the discharge end of the steam nozzle, which has a larger diameter. The inside of the steam nozzle is smooth, and you can see the orifice is round. You can see the threads on the steam nozzle are straight SAE threads. There we have the job number engraved on the side of the steam nozzle indicating the part and the distinctive serial number that this equipment was ordered under. Uh, it also shows what jet this is used for. H stands for a hogger, Z for Z stage, Y for Y stage, and so on. The steam nozzle has a metal gasket that is used between the steam nozzle and the steam chest. The gasket sits in the recessed area of the steam chest. There's the gasket, and it should be placed over the steam nozzle. These are metal gaskets, stainless steel. Then the steam nozzle is threaded back into the steam chest. If a steam gasket is not installed, then steam will leak past the steam nozzle and create problems with the vacuum. It's important that the steam nozzle be threaded securely into the steam chest so that nothing, uh, no steam can leak past this joint. The steam must come out of the end of the nozzle, not the point between the nozzle and the steam chest. 
otherwise it'll put an extra load onto the ejector and harm the, its performance. It is important on startup to blow down the steam lines before the steam ejector so that all debris, rust inside the pipe can be uh, removed before it can get stuck inside the steam ejector nozzle as shown here. The rust will block the orifice of the steam nozzle preventing good flow of the steam through it and thus harm the performance of the ejector. It is always important to remove this rust and to do so you have to remove the steam nozzle from the steam chest. Here we are looking down the in the connection of the steam chest looking down the throat of the steam ejector. This is the inlet cone area shown here of the ejector and it tapers down to the smallest diameter of the ejector throat called the bore. It's very important that this is uh, clear. Here's another view showing that uh, the bore and the throat, inlet throat. Uh, this is important to keep this clear of all debris. Here we show the uh, steam ejector set up to have a performance test done on. We have set up a pressure transmitter on the discharge end of the ejector so that the back pressure on the ejector can be measured. Here we show the pressure transmitter on the suction head so we measure the vacuum. Another view of the transmitter on the suction. Here is the transmitter to record the vacuum. This, the transmitter is set up in this shot to show both the suction and the discharge pressures measured in tour. Here we have, show the steam motive pressure gauge set at 90 PSIG. Has a steam siphon in it, and we put in a tap for blowing down steam to keep the uh, moisture out of the steam since we are not insulating the steam pipes for this performance test. Here we show the valve controls the steam to the ejector. Opening the valve increases the mode of steam pressure which passes more steam through the ejector and vice versa when you close the valve. In order to do a performance test on a steam ejector we use a tool called a piccolo. It is attached to the suction of the steam ejector. It consists of a series of various size orifices to pass different amounts of air as the suction load to the ejector. It is used to generate a performance curve of different loads in pounds per hour versus the vacuum pressure. This is a close-up of an orifice. Here we're going to show how we use a motive steam pressure gauge and a vacuum gauge which measures in millimeters of mercury absolute. The effects of increasing the mode of steam pressure above the design steam pressure. This ejector was designed to operate at 85 PSIG mode of steam. You can see here as we increase the steam pressure above the 85 PSIG, the absolute pressure of the ejector rises, which means the vacuum is getting worse. There were up to over 100 pounds pressure, and the vacuum went up to 160 torr. As we lower that steam pressure back down near the design pressure, you can see the vacuum improving. The absolute pressure is decreasing. Now we're going to show the effects as you decrease the mode of steam below the design pressure the ejector will reach a point where the vacuum will break. Here we're dropping below 80 PSIG. We still have good vacuum, low absolute pressure. And then there at 75 pounds pressure, you can see the vacuum broke. 
or the absolute pressure increased rapidly. Now we will increase the mode of steam pressure to see where the jet picks back up or where the vacuum will recover and it is approximately 80 psig. As you can see we have a good reading of 139 millimeters of mercury absolute. This demonstrates how it is important to operate the steam ejector at the design mode of steam pressure. The ejector has some safety that it can operate at a few pounds lower than the design. If you're operating higher than the design, you're just wasting steam and hurting your vacuum. The information gathered during the performance test of the steam ejector is used to plot the performance curve for the ejector. The absolute pressure vacuum is plotted for each of the different suction load points at a constant mode of steam pressure. This generates the performance curve of the ejector. Carl Reynolds thanks you for watching this video and we hope it helps you understand ejectors much better.